hello guys good evening in today's very video edition here i'm going to be teaching you guys how to test a three pin crank sharp position sensor let me go ahead and uh okay i zoomed in pretty much okay you can see this is three pin so how do you test this using a multimeter that's what i'm going to be teaching you guys today so if this is bad you're going to know if this is not generating a signal or there is any open circuit you're going to understand it how it works so in order for you to do this test successfully you're going to be needing a multimeter right you might need something like a screwdriver that has a meter on it then uh, you're going to be needing a 12 volt battery right so i'm going to zoom in zoom out a little bit you can't go further than this because i'm using a wide uh, angle on my on my phone so now this is the three pin wire so the first thing you want to do here is to get a uh, three clip that would be fine let's say three alligator clip but since i'm not having a alligator clip here so i'm going to be pulling out clips any clip which i'm going to be using to unpin it now i've made my setup but i'm going to explain it to you this pink wire goes to the positive part of the battery the white wire go to the negative part of the battery. Now, the negative of the of the multimeter, which you're gonna need to on it and turn it to voltage range, DC voltage range. The negative terminal will be going to the negative uh, terminal of the battery. The negative uh, probe is gonna be going to the negative part of the battery. Now, the positive side, aside uh, what I just told you right now, I have my clip, a, a socket which I'm gonna be using to test run this. Uh, three pin crunch operation sensor and another second socket it's supposed to actually be three uh, sockets because there's gonna be a lot of uh, vibration and uh, I would have loved to get that pin so that this would be easier because without that pin right now there's gonna be a lot of vibration and it's gonna mess up with the with the reading so let me get the pin let me look for a pin here which I'm gonna be using to complete this if I can find a very suitable three pin that would be fine but in your own case I I suggest you use the alligator clip three of them or any comfortable pin that can go into these very three pins here. That's the first thing you need to get before we proceed further. Now, after getting the pin, you want to identify which side uh, is the positive and which side is the negative. They have polarity for this very three pin uh, crunch up position sensor. For this very crunch up position sensor, which is... Uh, Come on, this is for Volkswagen, Audi, so you're going to be looking at that. Okay, thank you. I'll be needing another one. Find another one if you can. Okay, this is the kind of pin which you're going to be needing. So let me unclip this area. Unclip this area because I'm going to be doing something with it. Tie, untie this uh, wire. Okay, that's good. But not too much because we don't want to create any short circuit here because you have two life positive uh, 12 volt battery coming here so now I'm gonna be clipping this red one the, to the middle I want you to understand that the middle pin there is always the signal wire now for Volkswagen Audi and most uh, Volkswagen products uh, Lamborghini and others Bentley when you see a three pin socket three pin uh, uh, socket inside their circuit the curved area is the ground and you can see this notch here that looks like positive. That is a positive where the positive goes. So this curved area is the ground. Don't forget, it's always a brown wire that goes to this very side here. So I'm going to go ahead and ground it, which you're seeing here. And my negative uh, probe is connected to it. So I'm going to go ahead and connect it here. This is going to be a little bit tricky because this uh, pin is not meant for this very thing which I'm doing here. But I'm trying hard to see how I'm going to be able to pull it off. Okay, that is attached. I'm gonna try as much as possible to keep the wire out of the way. Now we come on to the second pin. The second pin also need to clip. And uh, don't forget, don't forget the pink wire, like I said here. Destroy the pins. Okay, sublet cut. I will the pins. I need to be or apply a hovering wreckage. Where is we are? 
Okay, so you can see this one is already unclipping, which is not a good idea. Uh, I want to get it real clipped there. That is why it's good to have a very good uh, clip that can go in there like this one here. I hope you guys can see it. Right, so this one is very good as you can slot right in there without having any issues. Can you see it right there? That's how it's supposed to be. So just a moment, I want to get more pins so that we get this done correctly. Okay guys, uh, now we've got a better pin, uh, better uh, socket, which is like this. That's what you should find because it's gonna give space within inside. So look at how the connection is. They're not touching each other. So this one here, don't forget, this is the ground. This is the signal wire and this is the positive. So we're gonna be co connecting the positive wire to here. You need to cut this wire short to avoid any uh, short circuit. Keep it aside. Now we're gonna go ahead and connect the negative to here. The polarity is very important because if you miss the polarity, I'll tell you what's gonna happen. If you miss the polarity, I want you to see, this, to see the connection very well. The negative come over here and fit the negative part of your multimeter. All right? To fit the negative part of your multimeter, then the positive comes here. It doesn't share with any part. Then you have only one pin left. And that is where... Now, if you are having any coming, okay, a very good uh, tip, I want to take this side and plug it back, let me black tape. Okay, so I've got a, a cello tape. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover this side because I don't want it to short circuit within inside there, but it has to connect and take data readings. That's one of the most key important thing. I also advise you to tape the other side if you are sure that you cannot actually keep your hands steady to avoid making a mess. Now I'm gonna go ahead and connect it to the middle, the middle pin there, so you guys can see. So I'm gonna go straight into the middle pin, and you are set. So and when you are set and get it correctly what you should be getting here oh one has gone out you need to connect it back when you have done it correctly the reading you should be getting on your multimeter is what you're gonna see on my multimeter right now so let me let me reconnect it back okay now this is the readings you are going to be getting on your multimeter. If you are getting anything different from this very reading here, while leaving it in the voltage range, then there is a problem, right? So you need to switch the polarities. Don't touch the middle one. You need to switch the polarities, the negative uh, to the other side. If you are getting 12 volts here, it means the positive power is feeding the negative, right? But if you have set it correctly the way I have taught you here, follow the white wire, it goes to the negative. Follow the purple wire, it goes to the positive. Then the middle wire goes to the to the uh, positive probe of the of the multimeter. Now this is where the the magic happens. So I'm gonna go ahead. I want you to keep your eye on the multimeter. This is exactly how your car automotive system uh, crankshaft is designed. So when I switch this, you start seeing reading right there. Can you see? When I do this again, you can see the signals is generating. All right, you can see it. Now I wanna shift my hands to this side so you can see it very well. You can see how it's generating signal. So each time your crankshaft goes in there, that start moving towards it, that is how it generates the signal and give it back to the ECM to know which of the cylinder to fire, which of the cylinder not to fire. So when, if you're seeing a reading like this, that says that this very crankshaft position sensor is good. But after setting it up and you tested it and you are not seeing any reading while swiping iron, to, uh, across the surface like this, 
if the reading is not changing and fluctuating, then it means the crankshaft position sensor is bad. Go ahead and replace it. So follow the wiring steps which I have taught you in this very episode and you are going to be able to test any three pin sensor or actuator in the automotive system. Don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. Drop a comment if you have any further questions and I'm going to catch you guys later. Bye for now.